everybody, it is the Electric Wolf for season two. Sorry, it is taking so long. Unfortunately, we've been having a lot of technology issues, which we've been able to clear up. And we've been looking at some new games this year. This is going to be good. Starting off with RoboCraft. This is an not necessarily an indie game. It is an early access game right now for free on Steam. The premise of it is basically that you build said robot out of like what seems to be Minecraft-ish type blocks and keep in structures, such as SMGs, submachine guns, wheels, radar dishes, anything else that, that can really improve your game from the full lot of what you can buy in the Cube Depot. But let me just start this off by saying this is a game that's I've become very quickly addicted to. Uh, but it is free to play unless you get the premium. Now, if you look in the upper right, and I should hopefully be able to magnify that, but in case I don't, in the upper right it says add premium, you see 3D next to it because I've actually gone out and paid them because I believe in the product. And I got in three days, which means I essentially get double the type of rewards that you would generally get from a game uh, because you pay for that service for that long. Now, let's focus on what you see in the upper right before we go on. The yellow is stars, it's tech points. Tech points allow you to actually buy things from tech tree, so kind of like upgrading or adding. As you can see, I've already played it quite a bit, so I've already gone pretty far, but using tech points related to the tier, because that's of a certain number, you can then buy things like new wheels, new thrusters, new weapons, whatever you need to do. Now, buying them here means you unlock them. To actually purchase them, you would need to go to the Q Depot up here in the menu that you hit by hitting um, tab and use these green points to actually purchase these items. Now, the green points stand for reward points, I believe. And these type of things, both the yellow and the green, because that's just easy to remember that way, are given to based upon your ability to perform in each match. Now, it's generally determined by how many other robots you kill as well as how many other cubes you destroy. You see everything here is considered to be a cube. Now the blue is how much currency you have unpaid for funds. This is the type of stuff you need in order to buy more premium days. If you go here, you'll see the values actually available to you. Unfortunately though, they've managed to do it in such a way that in order to get one of these, you have to to load up on these GC type points. So let me see if I'll give you a screen. So I can do it way too way too high. So I can go to add funds. And if you notice, they do five cents less than a dollar, which means in Steam you actually have to pay for the full five dollars or ten dollars and you have five cents left over because they're good people of course. And this will get you the currency cash that you'll need to actually add those funds. Sorry. That's generally how that works. Now, to access any of that type of stuff, you need to hit tab. That will bring you all the menu, which means up here you'll have the actual menus in order to play and build your robot, as well as your ability to battle here. I always agree on practicing what you have first, then battling with each other, and then boss battle, which we'll explain in later videos when we reach that tier. Now, up here, inventory shows you what you currently have available to build with. This is stuff that you don't need to purchase because you've already purchased it. Provided there's some number after it. Obviously, they still stock the zeros. So if you have it or you've bought it once before, you'll see it here. Now, Q Depot allows you to purchase additional. In case you don't have it, you can get it here, and what you you can buy is actually listed up here in the green. If you wish to sell it, you click sell, shows you how much. Does it make sense a lot of times? No, I usually just keep it so we can keep building lower robots. So you, you don't get the full value back. Unfortunately, that means if you make a mistake, you're kind of in a bad place. Now what you just saw, actually let me go back to chassis. So what you just saw, when you roll over these items, it gives you values. Now generally I try to ignore the written text and focus on what's below it. The mass determines exactly how much it weighs, and that makes a difference when you're doing things like flight, like hover, or actual plane flight, or something like that. Uh, armor tells you how strong they are and how many hits they can take. So things to tier 2 will have an armor of 136, whereas tier 3 will have a little bit more armor. 
CPU load means how many P flops it takes up in your in your machine. You notice in the upper left. Hopefully we can uh, expand that later for you. Upper left, you see 54 level in the CPU of 270 out of 1,006 P flops. Essentially, it means that I can have at most 1,006 cubes or some variation of the machines or the weapons that add up to it. Now, while all cubes are one, things like guns are definitely not one. So you roll over, they become 10. When you go higher, they become uh, 20, 24. Uh, you got 20 on that one though. Here we go, 32 on that. So they keep going up as you go up in level and capabilities, which tries to balance it out. Okay, so tech tree, like we said before, this is where you get to actually unlock items for you to purchase. Provided that, of course, you get enough points in the tier. Now, fighting in the tier gets you to tech points relative to that tier in question. So if you're fighting on tier four, you're not gonna earn tier one points. You actually have to be on a tier to earn those points themselves. As time goes on, we've noticed that uh, Robocraft creators have actually added additional items to lower tiers, kind of forcing people to go back and play on some lesser stuff. Part of that is the quarterback tiers here with the shoulder guards that they did with the y Yolks cast, I think, um, kind of uh, event, I guess, for Thanksgiving, the whole football thing. Uh, they also have these Uber points, so if I click on one of these, I buy with the tokens or I can use Uber Tech points, which essentially means I need to pay to convert the points I have on that tier so I can use it on any tier. And it costs the blue points, which is what you pay for, so generally it's not a good deal. It's essentially free for you to go and just build a robot down to the right tier. Garage allows you to see all your bays. You're up to three unless you want to buy additional one for 750 game credits or whatever that is. And you can change your name to whatever you want to do load the robot or sell it sell it once again you won't get the full amount what you put into it so that may not be worth it social allows you to go in as you can see it's not many people online right now and you're probably not going to make a whole lot of friends on here so it's going to be just people you pick up in steam and you can enter a platoon which essentially means when you go into a game they're going with you which kind of gives you a little bit of advantage because you trust those people and generally you're then talking to them on skype or team speak or something um general the only other thing you have to do is texting within the game which becomes a problem when you, you're in the heat of the moment not a lot of people will listen to you to tell you the truth. Robo Shop allows you to actually purchase uh, an already made robot in case you don't want to go through the hassle of building yourself which I think kind of takes up the fun. So There's a couple good ideas but I wouldn't necessarily run to it. It's time for you to actually kind of play and learn your learn your way on. Definitely a game for someone who likes building type stuff, Minecraft or even Legos. Work, work with it. The very bottom, bottom left you have your social bar which allows you to chat. Um, not a whole lot of encouragement to do it. You'll generally find it's just once again some trash talking. Tiers at the bottom determines what tiers you're actually going to be fighting. You're going to start in tier 1. Everything you see here added up to a value that meant only tier one. Those values, as you can see, will be on these items here. You'll see robot ranking. And those robot rankings add up to a certain tier. Now this is tier one, so it's gonna be just one point, it looks like. Tier two, when you go up, will have 2.7 and so on and so on. They get the uh, link grow in sophistication, which means your, your robot will eventually grow. Uh, for example, if I was to change out something on here, let's see what I can change. If I was to change the wheels to tier 2, which is a much higher robot ranking, you'll see the bar at the bottom start to grow up a lot more significantly than before. But not enough to take me over. You're generally going to need a couple things, which you earn simply by playing. It's a horrible circle. But it makes sense, and it makes it fun. As time goes on, there will be more events, more promotions. They'll come with some more free points, which will add up to free premium days, which is kind of cool because it encourages more people to play. But uh, you'll see that as they come along. This may be a regular weekly thing to show battles, but in the meantime, I want to show working through the tier, see what works, see if you guys can learn through what 
I've gone through and uh, may help me complete some tiers on the way. Oh, one more thing. Above me, if you notice, there's a times two first victory bonus. The first time your bot lives through a victory of your team during a day, you get double what you would normally get. So if you have premium, you eventually just get quadruple at that point. Now, that means living through it. So even if your team wins, but you die before that happened, you will not get credit. You have to be there at the very end, um, even if you're just essentially a pilot with a seat, because I have a pilot stuck all the way in here. Uh, important thing to keep in mind when building these things, so let me uh, bring the block up so I don't lose it when I do this. See, pilot goes right in there. Important thing to keep in mind when you're building these is that your game is essentially over when the pilot's seat is gone, which means the block underneath the pilot's seat is destroyed. So you want to do everything you can to protect it. This does a lot to protect the, the pilot essentially from initial hits. However, if it flips over, it's just as vulnerable as it's attack because only one block deep. As more and more sophistication come, you want to add shields to the front of this and so forth, but you want to make sure you protect the pilot because that is a game over. Alright, well, no chit chat. Let's work through our practice so you get to see what that looks like. Hmm. Here we go. And then after that, we will do a battle. And we'll call it there for the first episode. Let's see what we can do. Sorry about that. We had some issues here because Steam actually kicked me out. Let's go back into it now. Do some practice. You should always do practice before you do battle with a new robot design. You'd be surprised how many times a robot ends up being un imbalanced, unbalanced, sorry, and essentially just puts you lying on your side. Yeah. See the SMG. The luxury just peppering the shots. Nothing over powerful. By the way, practice really a lot of firebacks. But, I'm most effective with this design when aiming completely in the front. As you can see here, distance is really an issue. Alright, now, I'm doing this by using the left click on the mouse. If I use the right and hold on, I can just zoom in and press the more accuracy of my shots. Effective as as effective as uh, all my guns can fire, which sometimes as you can see not very good. I also do not think this is your own ship I'm facing, so I'm upset about that. Now, when you play, generally it's uh, team on team, you're not solo. About that. All right, so we know that my robot can move, can maneuver. It will not flip over immediately, and it definitely can fire, albeit not a whole lot. Powerful. So we're gonna live with that. We're gonna go to actual battle so we can earn some better pieces. Okay. Alright, so let's take this horrible wreck, this ugly brown machine, send it out to the field, and prepare to start crying at how poorly it's going to perform, probably. Kind of flew through this part. Now, you see there's a lot of people on right now, and for the Tier 1 server, 118 robots are currently signing up, which probably means there's a bit of lag or a server damage. It seems like each server is dedicated to a certain tier. Oh, faster than I thought. Alright, so we're going in. Looks like it's going to be quite a big fight. Uh, I'm the only one with premium, which means everyone gets a 5% bonus to their points because I came in with premium. 5% is added to your bonus for every person within the lobby that has premium access. Now, if you notice for the one for, that has premium, it's 100% plus whatever that percentage is on top of that. So just for me being in there, it's going to be 105%. Looks like we're having problems with the server, so hold on. Uh, so we get for early access, unfortunately. Oh, 
Okay, so probably not the best demonstration so far of RoboCraft. Uh, the servers do this. Does it, does it happen often? Not in my experience, but does it happen? Yes. Uh, part of the problem probably is that, you're, once again, you're playing an early access game, so I'm sure that whatever revenue they're making by people who volunteer to pay for premium is probably not giving them the fastest or the most number of servers to help with this type of issue. But then again, it's hard to complain about something that you're not necessarily having to pay for to get. Alright, and as we learned, getting to the screen doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be in the game. Looking good, looking good, at the very bottom there. All right. Now this is one of their Mars maps. It's like we're playing a couple people. If you notice, the icons above their head denotes what type of weapon they have. And it looks like Xs are SMGs, like what I have. And the trying the di oh, sorry, the diamonds, because I'm a bit of an idiot here. I'll try to follow him and see what he has. As you see, a hover bat on oh, just came past me. Okay, so I'm struggling to move a little bit here. Let's see if we can get anywhere. That is an example of what you should not do. Notice he has no balance. This guy has a nice lamp on this thing. Should I stop him? Well, I think he has a, what's called a rail gun. This is what it sounds like. It's actually just a real gun. It means a long load time. And pretty significant hit usually when you dress. Now, we see an enemy here. I know there's a couple red dots on the map as well. We got one going down just behind us. Let's see if we can get a couple of There's a couple ways to do it. I generally try to aim for center because hitting the pilot means game over no matter what. So it's battling someone here. Sure, where the heck those shots are coming from now? now? I've already lost a couple blocks. It's kind of a cool effect. This is that Just to make these losses. Looks like got another kill. This guy lost the ability to move. There we go. I still got my kill here. I, think. I haven't lost a wheel, but I've noticed I lost two guns. Now, at this tier, there is no healers. This is an example of what not to do here. Oh! I got a rear wheel, so I can't really focus. Anyway, there's a lot of people in my cell. Try to see if we can get out of here in any way, shape, or form. Nope, cannot. Alright, guys, so we're gonna call here. That's a tier 1 fight. I'm not gonna let you see me suffer, essentially. But the goal is essentially for them to be on each base and tap it, and I'll show you what that looks like next episode. Thank you for joining for Robocraft. Episode 1. If you ever go online, friend me, send me requests, love to play with people. Catch you later. Bye.